Okay, so this lecture for lab six should be pretty straightforward, at least in terms of the instructions for the lab. The purpose of this lab is to build a few examples in ARENA that have elements of some of the realistic aspects of systems that some of you even asked about, like scheduling capacities, scheduling failures, uh, what we you know what we mean by scheduling a failure and failure and so on. So the way this is structured, like uh, any one of our normal labs, it's an individual assignment. You actually upload uh, quite a few files here, but you'll see that these files, at least the first four of them, have very few differences between them in the case of the ARENA. And then along with these six model files that you'll upload from ARENA, uh, which are down here, you'll also have a lab uh, document, this docx file, that answers some questions, some comparison questions for the three parts of the lab here. And it may seem backward, but if you can, it's all very helpful if you also upload a PDF version of your docx file. Having both of those actually simplifies the grading process for us in Canvas, uh, but I'm only requiring the docx file. All right, so in the first part of the lab, you actually build a model from scratch here. So I'm asking you to build a model that roughly looks like this flow up here, where you have arrivals that come in, so imagine a create block inside the basic uh, process blocks in Arena. And then you've got uh, eventually you know, reaching this departure, so that's your dispose, and then two processes in between. So these are these process blocks. I want this process to use a separate resource than this process. So both of these should be configured as seize delay releases, but you should have one process type for or one resource type for process one and a separate resource type for process two. They both can have capacity one. Basically, I want it so that entities arrive, they have to wait in order to be serviced by process one, and then have to wait to be serviced by process two, and then get an opportunity to depart. Now, you're going to create four different versions of this which vary in the distributions that you use and the arrival side and the two processes here. What's in common across all four versions is that arrivals are always separated by 10 minutes on average. And process one will always have an average service time of nine minutes. And process two, which is independent from process one, will also have an average time of nine minutes. What you're gonna measure in all four of these cases are the average numbers in the queue at both processes. So there's gonna be a queue at process one and a queue at process two. And so you're going to study the average number waiting in that queue at each one of those processes. And you can get that out of the reports at the end of the simulation. You'll also study the average total time in the system for these items or these entities that arrive and then eventually depart. And you're gonna be comparing across these four models. So in the first model, I want you to use exponential inter-arrival times here in your create block and exponential service times in both of the process blocks. Again, they use a different resource, but we're gonna say that they hold on to resource one for an exponentially weighted time, and then they also hold on to resource two for a separate independent exponential uh, waiting time. In, in the second model, we're going to do a constant inter-arrival time and exponential service times. So you can leave these service times the same as they were in the first model, but you change this to a constant. And then we flip that in the third model where you have exponential service time or exponential inter-arrival times here and then constant service times. So a constant nine minutes here and a constant nine minutes here. And then finally in the fourth model, we do constant on all, across the, all of them. So a constant 10 minutes between each here, a constant nine minutes here, and a constant nine minutes here. So the structure of the system is remaining the same, but the input models are changing. So this goes to show how you can sell the structure of the system in your simulation, but depending on your choices of these distributions, you may get very different performance out. And that's why it is so important to choose the correct distributions. And that's what I want you to experiment here with here. So build the model once and basically save that four times and then go into each one of those and then change whether what distribution you're using across these three blocks. 
Okay. In parts two and three, we're going to build on the guided tutorial output from the previous lab, from lab five. So you can grab the model that you used in lab five, or I've actually on the website provided you uh, under lab six, a version of the model that's been pre-built as if you came directly out of that guided tutorial. So as a reminder, here's what we built in lab five. So it was this manufacturing and test system where we have two different types of parts that arrive. They uh, get a different sealer time and uh, those they go through different processing or prep times. They go through the sealer. They get tested to see whether they um, the sealer was successful. If not, they go through a rework process. And then from that rework process, they get tested again. And then from there, they either get scrapped or salvaged. Or if they didn't fail the initial inspection, they were just immediately shipped. So that's what we already did in Lab 5. Now, adding this realism in, we have to recognize that, for one, the rework process, you can imagine the capacity of this resource might change over time. So sometimes we might have more available to do the rework and sometimes we might have less. In addition, sometimes the sealer may fail and be unavailable until it's serviced. And so we need to be able to model basically a changing schedule of capacity here and then we need to model how the sealer's state can change over time and while the sealer is offline, the queues that will accumulate until we wait for it to get serviced. So that's what we're going to build. So you start with this provided model and then go into your book. This is in that same chapter four, but now we're focusing on chapter four two, which um, is sort of section four two, which is this model four two, the enhanced electronic assembly and test system. I want you to read through section 421, which describes resource states. And so we use the term state here because we're saying that the resource can be, say, idle, it can be busy, it can be failed, and those things can change over time throughout the simulation, and that's why they're states. So then in section 422, it shows how you generate a schedule of capacity so you can end up taking that resource that's used in that rework process and changing how much of that resource is available. In other words, how many reworks can you do in parallel at one time? Now, in the book, you'll see, and I'll, in the next slide, I go into more detail about this. There is a graphical schedule editor that most versions of the book that you have are going to refer to. At some point in Arena's recent history, they remove the graphical schedule editor. So you have to use the manual schedule editor, which is also described in the book, but you have to skip over the graphical schedule editor part to find it. And I will show you that here on the next slide. Then once you're done applying those changes to that rework schedule, then I want you to read through section 423 that, that shows how to use the failure data module to take that sealer process offline for a certain amount of time. Now you're going to have to find that in the advanced process template panel. And so I'll tab over to Arena and show you where all this stuff is and where you can find those advanced process templates if you don't already have them populated in your Arena. After you've done all of that, run your modified model and compare your results to the base model. And by base model, I mean the model from last time. So I mean the model from lab five. If you do happen to get this 150 entity error, then I want you to think about why is your model generating so many entities and why did these changes cause that error? And then save your modified model as this model 0401 part one DOE. All right, so I mentioned the first thing here. In section 422, they refer to a graphical editor, and that graphical editor doesn't exist anymore. So if you've got your model 4.1 up and running, and there's your rework process right here, down the left-hand side, if you click on resource, it will bring down this, uh, this resource down here. Oh, that's actually should say schedule. So let me just tab over to arena here. So uh, I meant to highlight schedule there. And so if you click on the schedule, 
then you'll end up getting these schedules down here. So I'll update this in the slides that go online. And then from this schedule, if you were to right click on this schedule anywhere, let's say right here, I can go to edit via dialog. And then that brings up this dialog that allows me to edit this, this uh, resource schedule. And so down here under durations, if I were to edit these durations, the way you interpret these pairs is the first number is the capacity and the second number is how long the resource has that capacity. So what the way we read this is for eight hours, we have one unit of a resource available. And then for the next eight hours, we upgrade and now we have two units of the resource that are available. So that's how you find that. So if I were to click on resource, it shows me all my resources and under rework, it says based on schedule. And it says it's got this rework schedule right here. And uh, if I were to edit this via dialog, it just says rework schedule. And so what I then need to do is click on schedule. That brings me to the scheduling pane here. And then I can right click on that and go to edit via dialog and that brings up this schedule and that's what we use instead of that graphical schedule that is mentioned uh, in the book. Now I also mentioned that under advanced process that's where you find this failure data module and so this advanced process panel if you don't have that if you go over to um, any white space in this template panel and you go down to template panel and say attach then it should bring up hopefully something that looks like this where you've got under the C drive program files Rockwell software arena template it's got all of your possible template panels that you can add and you want to click on the advanced process one and open that and that should add it up here as a panel that you can go into and in that panel, that's where you find the failure data module. Some of you may have that already populated by default, but if it only, say, has the basic process in here and not the advanced process, that's where you go get it. You can attach that panel, and then you'll get access to that failure data module. All right, we'll go back to the PowerPoint. And again, I said I will change that so that it uh, better reflects what that's supposed to look like. Now, uh, so then the next part, part three, the other part of realism that we're going to add to this is the amount of time it takes to actually move around a manufacturing floor. So part A arrives and then it takes a certain amount of time to get to the prep process. It takes a certain amount of time to get to the sealer. It takes another amount of time to then get to the inspection zone and then possibly be reworked and then again more transfer to one time to go through inspection and then finally get out here. So each one of these routes takes significant time. So although the activities that we usually think of when we conceptualize a manufacturing system are probably in things like how long does it take to do the preparation? How long to do the sealer? How long to do the rework? If we want to model a real system, then maybe it matters for us to get these transfer times right because it might take a really long amount of time to get from here to there and that may affect how things queue up, for example. So if, uh, and so what you're going to do is start with your the model that you just built from part one and then read about stations and transfers in section 441 and then apply the changes from 442 and this these changes in section 442 allow you to actually encode the time it takes to move from one space to another uh, based on the distance between those run your model and compare your results to the existing part one doe model and again if you get some sort of error then you should hopefully be able to explain that but as a tip we're just building the models directly out of the book the book is based on the student edition and so if you're getting these errors then double check that say your time units are correct in the way you've created things and so on and so forth save your modified model as this part two and the goal for today is if you're in the lab you should be able to get all the way to this part uh, through the lab period and then you can go home and do the reporting all right so that's all of lab six create a word document that has your comparison for the four different scenarios then for part two 
compare the model with failures and capacity schedules to the base model that, without those things, and then compare that more realistic model to an even more realistic model that has these transfer delays. Uh, whenever you do comparisons of two different models, make sure you're using the same simulation setting. So make sure that your replications run for the same length of time. Make sure that you're creating entities that um, have the same statistics and so on and so forth. After you do all of that, you'll have this docx file and maybe a PDF, and then you'll have these six arena models. Upload all seven or eight, if you've got the PDF2 files to Canvas, and this should say, you know, all files, it shouldn't say all four, so uh, I'll update that as well in the uh, slides that will go online. And that's all I have for you, so good luck with this. If you have any trouble, again, feel free to post to discussions on Canvas or send us a note.